Well, here's one definitely from the crapophone stable, I'm afraid, but uh, it looks far too new to have just been slung out on the dustbins. Uh, the, the thing is, it's a stereo cassette player. It's got a built-in mono amplifier in there. But what it does as well, you have got two RCA plugs on top for a signal out. And you've also got a USB lead. So I'm guessing that this is for converting cassette tapes to, uh, what do they call it, MP3 or whatever it is these kids have nowadays. Looks quite nice with the blue light. <laughs> Now, as this came off the dust, of course, I haven't got an installation disc or anything to go with it. So, uh, you know, I have to uh, download something, I suppose, off the interweb to do it. The cassette mechanism is frighteningly basic. It's like the ones were that were installed in older cars. You know, think back to the 70s, and you know, the cheapies in the 1980s. Pushing the button in halfway simply disengages the pinch roller from the capstan allowing the take-up spool to spin more freely and sort of fast forward it. Pushing the button in all the way as you see ejects the tape and then to start it again all you do is that. There isn't even a headphone socket on this. Uh, Betterware UK Limited. <laughs> it's made in China. What a surprise. <laughs> a power consumption 8 watts. But uh, what on earth this was thrown out for, I've no idea because it's absolutely immaculate. Well, the only thing I can see that's wrong is a faint sort of scuff mark there. It hasn't even dented the metal speaker grill. And there's a bit of a scuff mark there, but I should think that would come out with a bit of back to black or something like that. Actually, considering it's a crapophone, it's got a very nice steady speed on there doesn't fluctuate at all. Well, so uh, yeah, that might be one to put on eBay, I suppose. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, yeah. oh, got another beast over there from Sharp. And, uh, that belongs to uh, young Adam up in Ashford. Ah oh, dear, yes, and it's up the creek. Now, I had one almost identical to that but mine doesn't feature high speed dubbing it was same machine really but uh, he had that from me the other week uh, we agreed a price and that was that and uh, of course i refurbished it all tarted up the mechanisms and uh, put new playheads in so off it went for another few years <laughs> we hope and uh, so now this one has come my way for well, mechanical overhaul, really. It was used in a curry house, I should think, in the kitchens. So, if you get close to it, you can distinctly smell the curry. <laughs> and uh, the mechanisms here and there are a sort of yellowy colour, as if the uh, the turmeric's got out of them, you know, the, the curry powder. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, should be able to clean it all up. The most difficult part of it is that the mechanisms are quite good, really. They're not your average um, silver dollar flywheel things where a plastic pulley has a washer stuck to the back of it and, you know, they think that will suffice. They have actually got a proper machine flywheel. There's a separate motor for uh, each deck. But uh, the motor controls, now, they were a bit peculiar. As some of you will know, on the back of a lot of cassette motors, there's a little sort of a 
hot cross band sort of cross shaped rubber thing into which you can put a screwdriver and you can then turn the speed control pot up and down if your speed isn't right or if you've changed the belts or something well this thing has that on both motors but uh, it's blanked off and the speed controllers are actually on the main circuit board up here now thankfully this is quite an easy machine to work on uh, the mechanisms are held in by three screws once you take the, uh, the front off and the front just comes off with six screws at the back press eject on both of them slide it all four three screws out to get the mechanisms each out and then the uh, circuit board itself can just be slid forward like a drawer almost so uh, it's not exactly difficult but it's time consuming and fiddly shall I say to do the main problem was of course the belts and on this particular machine they're flat belts which uh, are a bit unusual aren't they you don't tend to see flat belts in too many boom boxes it's more a sort of high end hi-fi thing uh, saying that I think that Sharp GF7700 I think that's the number I've got has a flat belt in it but then that that has pretensions to be in high end you know and you do have to be a bit careful about where you go to get your flat belts because some of the ones on eBay are extortionately expensive it's absolutely crazy madness what they want for it but uh, what I did was to go to a firm called Cricklewood Electronics and uh, I've used them before and uh, they've always been very helpful in uh, getting funny bits or strange parts for things so uh, yeah and considering I only ordered them yesterday at round about or well, ended out of Garth about four o'clock I suppose but half past four it would have been by the time I'd ordered them they arrived this morning and that's a bloody good service isn't it in anybody's book and they weren't ridiculously expensive I've got a feeling they were didn't they were 150 each the postage and the handling was more than they were <laughs> but uh, there you are uh, there's these uh, the 13 by 8 speakers as a uh, sorted out a uh, new capacitor for the crossover there now this one had a choke screw to it as well connected to the uh, main 13 by 8 speaker to enhance the bass but uh, as the other speaker and got this choke um, I've taken it off and it doesn't seem to affect the tone at all because uh, it's such a big thing it's uh, going to sound nice and mellow isn't it you know it just has that look doesn't it and uh, I've actually got a couple of um, pairs of these in enclosures uh, I think one pair has the twin mylar tweeters and the other pair are like this and I, I really must get them out one day and uh, you know give them a blast because I haven't used them in years and you know, I suppose really they're just getting in the way here aren't they and then of course there's another pair I've got that came from the Ministry of Defence and they haven't got a tweeter at all they've just got a wizard comb so uh, they're just single way things with a, a twin cone in the middle but uh, outwardly they look like these do anyway so that's where we're at at the moment uh, still tinkering away it's a bit like the swan swimming along you know on the pond it all looks very serene and elegant but what you don't see is all the frantic paddling underneath <laughs> anyway see you soon